Hey everybody, it's Emma from Paint Pony Studios and we're going to be doing something a little bit different today and, and actually for the next couple weeks. I have a methodology project that is due for one of my art theory courses in college and my proposal was that I will do a, I will paint a different horse every day for 20 days I think I said, 15 to 20 days via a random number generator. So what I have done is I have put a list of Briar molds. I have micros and stable mates. I want to keep these small. Put a list of those molds, 1 through 20. I have solid base coat patterns, 1 through 20, and white markings, 1 through 20. And I've been plugging these into a random number generator to determine what I paint on a given day. I've already had the first two done, but I thought that it would be really cool for me to document my process and actually document the painting part of it too so I can show you guys what exactly I'm doing and the horse that I produce each day. So I'm hoping that I can keep these videos short enough where I can get them edited and up on every given day or maybe once or twice a week. I really, really like to show you guys my, pro my progress working on this project. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you guys what I've already got done. So these are the two I've already got done. This little guy was day one. So he is a black Tovero on the new Irish Draft Mini, which is from the Unicorn sets, the Unicorn Mini Winnies. So this was day one. I got black and a Tobiano pattern and then this particular mold. And then day two here is also from the new Mini Winnie Unicorns. And it was a Palomino Leopard Appaloosa on this Gypsy Banner mold. And now the kicker is with these that I cannot use that same base color or pattern again for the rest of the horses. So I have been crossing them off as I go, but that means like I will never get to use another black. I won't ever get to use Palomino again. Uh, I can't do another leopard. I can't do another Tovero. So I have to keep going on my sheet and not use something that I've already used. All right, let's go ahead and get started on today's. So this is what I mean when I say I've actually made a system for myself. These are all of the base coat colors. As you guys can see, I've already used black and I've already used Palomino, so those are crossed off. Same with over here, these are all the white markings and I have thrown in a couple no patterns. Now if I, if I roll a white, gray, or dominant white, I automatically have to cross off a no pattern. But as of right now, that has not happened. So these are all the solids, these are all the white markings, and then on the back here are the actual molds. And I have rolled a, a 1 and a 20, so it's a pretty healthy mix of stable mates and micros. All of these were primed ahead of time, and then of course I had to do like an exploration and project goals. So that is what I have so far. So today my rolls, I rolled a, I think it was a 4. Yes, I rolled a four, which is the Oberon Unicorn Micro, which is this guy right here, this guy. So that was the mold I rolled. And then if I go over here, I rolled Dunskin, so that's 12. And the pattern was Pentalusa, so 15. So we were going to do a Dunskin Pentalusa on this little unicorn mold, and I think it's going to be really, really fun. So you guys can excuse the messy paint station here. My colors for a Dunskin are going to be relatively the same as the Palomino. So like here's a Palomino right here. This guy I've been working on for a little while. Color's all done, but I just have to do his base. But relatively the same colors I want to use for the Dunskin. So starting with an iron yellow. Adding metallic gold. Shading with Burnt Sienna. Sometimes if I go a little bit too far, I have to use white to tone it down, so I've got my white here. And then we have Burnt Umber for shading. And you want to shade more with, with those colors than you ever do with black. So this is going to like take the place of my black for a bit until I get to the point where I actually need to do his black points. And then we will get there. Okay, seeing as this is day one, technically day three for me, but day one for you guys, I'm just going to show you, you know, tell you a little bit of studio procedures. It's, it is a little bit messy behind me, I apologize, but you want to be safe. So you want to have a mask on 
anytime you're working with something that you're spraying. So like I even wear this when I go outside to spray the matte sealer and the primer. You want to have protection. I also have a window open back there, pretty open wide and a fan that's going to blow all that away from me because I don't want any paint near me and I don't want it to stink up the house seeing as I'm working in the basement. But personal protective gear is always important. You guys want to make sure you have your PPE. But let's go ahead and get started painting. Again, this is this is the micro we're using today. Camera focus. When I paint micros, I'm not going to sit here and hold it with my fingers. I'd get hand, hand cramps. So what I do is I take pliers and I will gently hold the model by its tail. Now this is a great way to hold your model without getting finger, fingerprints on it and without getting cramps in your hand, but also make sure to take breaks between because you're definitely going to get sore, especially your airbrush hand, which for me is this one, so my, I'm right-handed. Uh, you're especially going to get sore airbrushing, especially on something so tiny. This is my airbrush. This is an Iwata Neo. Actually, this is an Iwata Eclipse, my bad. And it is a siphon feed. That means the paint gets sucked up through it. I don't like the top feeds. I have a couple. This is one of them. This is actually the Neo. I prefer the Eclipse, better quality, but as a starter airbrush, the Neo is pretty good. Just make sure you take care of it. Uh, I had a lot of problems with this because I didn't use the right paint in it and I didn't clean it, which is bad. Clean your equipment. So what I actually do before I start every time is I'm going to pop the back of the airbrush open, unscrew some things. I put them in my paint trays to make sure I don't lose them. And I'm going to take out my needle and sometimes I actually need my pliers to take out my needle. Very carefully, I might add. And I'm going to make sure that this thing is nice and clean before I go. Which, there's just a little bit of paint on the tip and that's exactly what you don't want. I try to make sure this is clean when I'm done using it, as well as starting it. So I'm going to put it back in. Get everything ready to go again. Perfect. And then that's my compressor that you're hearing in the background, that whirring sound in the background is my compressor. When I go to clean the tip between colors, you'll see me like stick my airbrush in some water, spray it out. Or I do also have cleaning solution. And not to mention, you don't just want to like spray paint and stuff. Like when you're cleaning, you don't just want to spray paint and stuff everywhere. I have a pot. A little nasty right now, but this is my airbrush pot with filter in it that I spray into to clean out my airbrush. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to narrate all the way through because you guys are not going to be able to hear me behind this. So what's going to happen is I'll just like show you guys what's going on as it's going on, and we'll probably like speed through this process until we get to the white markings.
Okay, so you guys just watched the entirety of me painting this little micro. Off camera, I added his dorsal stripe and leg barring with just a fine tip Prismacolor marker and it's archival ink. So it will not yellow or turn green or anything. It's archival quality ink. You gotta make sure that's what you're using if you're using markers on horses. As you guys can see, he does have, I really wish my camera would focus. He does have his leg barring, dorsal stripe, all that. He does look a little green on camera. I can show you guys that he does not look green in person. He is more sooty, but I really like that he looks like a primitive done. And that's what I really wanted out of done skin was a primitive done. So now we're gonna go and add our white markings. Now he's meant to be a Pintaloosa. So I'm gonna go research some Pintaloosa markings. And then what I will do is I draw on with a white charcoal pencil before I go and start actually using paint. So right now I'm gonna go research a couple Pentaloosa patterns and figure out just exactly what one I want on this guy. Okay, so I'm at the point where I have the white markings on. I did that off, off camera. And I'm actually gonna go out and seal this guy so I can get his Pentaloosa spots on. I have already sealed him once. I did, I did that off camera too. So I'll be starting to work on his details, get his mane and tail painted, get the spots on. I've already got some pinking and the horn done. Here he is so far. Oh, kind of focused, cool. All right, so there's one side and flip him over. Other side, and I gave him a nice big blaze and a pink nose. I got his eye whites on there. So, yep, just gonna seal him real quick and then come back in, paint up the mane and tail and add his spots, eyes, and hooves. Okay guys, day three is finished. I'll show you him in just a second. That took me about an hour and a half. I think I started at about, uh, maybe just an hour even. Um, I think I started at 9.30? I really should keep a little bit better track of the time, but I'm about, I've been watching something as I've been going to. So it looks like, yeah, maybe an hour, hour and a half is what I've spent on this particular model. And that is from airbrushing to all the way to detailing and all the finish finishing touches. So here he is. And we have our done, done skin Pentaloosa. I will get better uh, footage of this in a minute. I just kind of wanted to show you guys and talk a little bit about this. I do have to touch up some parts from when I went out to spray him. Uh, the pliers left a little bit, uh, rubbed off a little bit of paint on his tail, but probably my favorite so far. I am really, really happy with how this one came out and we're only on day three. So I will have to check off those boxes and make sure that I don't use any of these, um, not this color, this pattern, and, and clearly not this mold again. But this one was super fun and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process behind it. Okay guys, here's a little bit better look at this one that I just finished. All the areas that needed to be touched up were touched up. So he is all done. And I think he turned out really nice. I definitely think he's my favorite out of the three I've done so far. I do have 17 more to go. So that could definitely change. But this is really, I really, really love how he turned out. And I'm excited to see where this project takes me. And I hope you guys are too. All right, Pony Pals, that's it for this video. That's all I've got for you right now. But I do want to do some more of these little vlogs as I progress in this project. I hope you guys thought that was cool. Or if you want to see more, you know, let me know. And also subscribe. You got to make sure you guys subscribe so that you can keep up with this project as I'm going. Don't forget to follow on Instagram too. That's where I'm posting updates as I'm actually working. So if you wanna see the most current stuff, check us out on Instagram. But for now, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.